Hello, hello. I'm Massimo. I'm the Chief Product Officer and co-founder of Breadcrumbs. Really excited today to be here with a good friend of ours, Mike McFarland of Mike McFarland Marketing Group. And really excited about the topic, how to operationalize AI in your MarTech stack. Uh, I think it's really a hot topic right now. Everyone is jumping on the AI bandwagon, but a lot of people still have trouble understanding the potential and understanding how to operationalize it and how to integrate it in your marketing stack. So, Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. And the stage is all yours. Awesome. Thanks, Massimo. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really excited to be working with you guys again and having the opportunity to talk to everyone here about how you can operationalize AI, AI in your MarTech stack. Like Max said, my name is Mike McFarlane. I'm the president and co-founder of Mike McFarlane Marketing Group, or 3MG. Uh, a little bit of an agenda just to kind of go through what I'm going to be talking about today. I'll do a quick introduction about myself, my background, kind of where I've come from and why I'm talking to you guys about this today. The role of AI in modern marketing, uh, an introduction to how to use AI within marketing operations and what does that actually mean? A few stats because everyone loves to see some big numbers and everyone knows that AI is super hot right now. So there's some actually some pretty cool stats kind of surrounding that right now. But most importantly, what I really want to show is some really cool examples of how to use AI within your marketing automation platform, as well as just from an operational operationalization side of things. So talking about data formatting, data cleanliness, uh, getting ideas and prompts for what you can actually potentially use tools like chat, chat GPT for. And then we'll go through some real life examples of how I've personally used some of this with, with some of my clients and just where I'm kind of kind of poking my head into with all of this stuff because it's changing every day. Lastly, we'll talk about some challenges and ethical considerations around AI because I know that that's also a really big hot topic. You can't just say, hey, machine, take all of this data and do all this really cool stuff for me. There's some considerations you want to have as you're going through and using tools like ChatGPT, for example, as part of what you're doing. And then we'll talk lastly about how do you actually go about and implement AI within your marketing operations team. And then if we have any questions or anything else that we want to go through, we can certainly go through that towards the end. But starting with a little bit about me, my, like I said, my name is Mike McFarlane. I've been in the MarTech space now for just over 17 years, which kind of makes me feel like an old dog here. Uh, I'm a former Eloqua, Oracle, ComScore, PathFactory employee. I've run marketing operations teams. I've run uh, customer success teams. I've run product implementation teams. I've run pre and post sales consulting teams. I, all of those types of operational style roles is kind of what I really fit into. So I try to look at everything very holistically, not just specifically from a, a marketing standpoint, but from maybe a revenue operations standpoint where you're kind of touching all the different teams in terms of how revenue can impact your business. I am a true heavy metal enthusiast. You might see my Nirvana shirt here, not necessarily heavy metal, but more of the grunge side of things. I uh, love music. You can see guitars around me as well. I try to bring music into everything I do. I also have a, a podcast, the Indie Marketers podcast, where we talk about all this stuff, but we also talk about the music that I'm listening to or music that my guests are listening to as well. So that's just a little bit about me. Let's jump into kind of the role of AI and what we're calling mar modern marketing. So AI really empowers people to take a large swath of data and help make sense of it and start to make some decisions off of what you're seeing. These are things that we can typically do today and they're sometimes fairly manual depending on the tools that you're using. It could also be somewhat automated, but AI can potentially add a little bit of a different perspective to that. And I'll talk through some real life examples of that later on in the webinar today as well. It can help enable things like customer segmentation, making it easier to kind of identify and, and find specific audiences that you're wanting to hit with potentially personalized content or different offers. And we'll talk about some of the, the ethicalness. I don't know if that's really a word uh, of that later on as well. Uh, driving content recommendations. This is one that I see a ton on LinkedIn where uh, people are writing blogs 
based off of what they prompt chat GPT to. People are writing email copy. People are writing subject lines. Or maybe you're not even using the output of that, but you're using it to help generate ideas. And that's something that I use quite a bit when I'm working on things for my website or working on LinkedIn content uh, is using chat GPT as kind of like a partner to kind of tap on the shoulder and say, hey, do you have any thoughts about this? Do you have any ideas about this? Because it can sometimes just open up that, that wave of creativity for you. From an analytics perspective, AI, I think, is probably going to, you're going to see a lot of change in the future around this uh, with being able to forecast more accurately, uh, looking at customer behavior, and then combining those two things, kind of like we talked about earlier with advanced customer segmentation to really drive kind of really deep personalized marketing strategies, which will hopefully, knock on wood, drive more ROI for you as well. And then lastly, kind of near and dear to my heart, uh, I'm a marketing automation guy. Like I said, I started at Eloqua. Uh, my firm focuses on everything from HubSpot to Pardot to Marketo to Eloqua. Uh, you name it, we, we work on it. And what I've really kind of tried to dig my, my, myself into is using AI as part of the tool set that I have within these marketing auto automation platforms. So anything that I can do to kind of make tasks less repetitive for myself, if I can improve my own efficiency, if I can add some additional automation that maybe is very complex to build within a tool like a HubSpot, for example, uh, where I can use an AI tool to kind of help facilitate that, then I certainly want to be able to jump in and do that. So you can, you can kind of see that AI is really kind of touching all of the different facets of what we're doing as marketers from a content creation standpoint, from an analytics perspective, as well as from an automation perspective. When it comes into marketing ops, which again is kind of near and dear to my heart, uh, really what we're talking about here is using AI to and its algorithms or the way that it's using things to analyze data, automate some of those tasks, and again, make some of those data-driven decisions to help optimize our marketing campaigns and optimize our strategies. When it comes to marketing ops, we're kind of in the weeds with data every day. We're building lists for email campaigns. We're building custom reports. We're trying to merge and bring data together so we can get a better view as to what we actually wanna do with the potential cohort of folks who are in our database. AI doesn't solve all those problems, but it helps make it easier, especially if you have context. And really at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is we're trying to harness the power of the data that we're collecting. So whether it be from forms or whether it be from your CRM integration or whether it be from third-party data providers or enrichment services, we have all of these different data sources and we talk about not wanting to create silos. And so typically your marketing automation platform is gonna be your system of record. So when you bring all of this data together, it can sometimes be pretty complex to try and make sense of it. But if you know what you're looking for, if you're trying to figure out how does one thing relate to another, tools, the uh, different AI tools can help make that a whole lot easier for you. And I, I'm saying all of this right now before I actually jump into some real life examples, because I think that's also the really important part. When we talk about using AI and marketing ops, it's not just the, 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 the things that we theorize or yeah, can't say that word. It's not just the things that we want to kind of say from a thought leadership perspective that AI is going to help. We're talking about that, but I think it's really important when we talk about operations that we all understand how to use tools like chat, chat GPT. And I know that there are plenty of other ones. I'm going to walk through some examples of that with Zapier as well today uh, to kind of help make sense of data and make some of these tasks a lot easier to do. So before we jump into some actual examples, let's talk a little bit about some of the big stats that we're seeing around uh, AI and marketing these days. So for example, 250%, this is the rate that, tw uh, that uh, adoption grew with AI in companies between 2017 and 2022, which is crazy, crazy. And I bet you this year, between this year and next year, it's going to potentially even double because tools are becoming that much more accessible for end users like us to use to help bring efficiency to the job that we're doing. 16 billion. That's a lot of money. Research shows that AI and marketing is on the rise and this market is worth almost $16 billion as of 2021. 
So we, I guarantee you by the end of this year, by the end of next year, this number is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. We're seeing a lot of content creators get invested within AI for making uh, to, for making Instagram videos a little bit more poppy. I've used some to, to I've used some AI tools to generate clips from my podcast or from when I do of uh, my series Mike Versus live on LinkedIn to add captions and little emojis to the things that I'm talking about and helping to pick out specific snippets of my content that is going to drive potential user engagement. It's crazy stuff, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And this stuff is just gonna to continue to grow. It's gonna to continue to develop. It's gonna to continue to enhance the way that we do our jobs. And I guarantee you a lot of software that we use today, be it tools like Salesforce, tools like HubSpot, we're gonna see more and more AI developed into these tools to help bring additional efficiency to the things that we're all trying to do. Now, all of this is great. We've talked about things at a very high level. We've talked about things that's really important from a marketing automation or a marketing operations perspective. But for me, the, the crux to all of this is actually showing some real life examples of how to do this. Now, I'm a, a solopreneur per se. I, I solo, I work with my wife, but, uh, and my wife has an incredible business as part of 3MG as well. But uh, one of the things kind of working solo the way that I do is that anytime that I can find a tool that's going to help add efficiency to what I'm trying to drive, what I'm trying to build, what I'm trying to theater, what I'm trying to come up with examples for, then I want to, I want to use those tools. It's going to make my life that much easier. So I've spent some time playing around with chat GPT. I've spent some time playing around with chat GPT in conjunction with Zapier and with HubSpot. And I've got a few cool examples that I want to show you everyone just in terms of how you can use these tools. And it can be really basic stuff, which we'll talk about. It can get a little bit more complex. And then we'll talk about how to actually automate some of this information that we're getting from ChatGPT into a tool like HubSpot. So I'm going to switch over here to my next screen. This is ChatGPT. And for those of you who are unaware what chat GPT is or have never used chat GPT. Basically chat, think of chat GPT as your search engine uh, that's much more conversational. So typically you'll go to Google, you'll search for a certain topic, you'll search for a certain question and you'll get a list of all of, of pages that kind of relate to, to what you're trying to do. And then it's up to you to go through and take a look at everything to make sure uh, that things look correct as well. Same thing with ChatGPT, but instead it's very conversational. So you can ask ChatGPT a question, like for example, what is the definition of marketing operations? And based on the data that it has, it'll start to go through and provide an op and provide a definition as to what marketing operations is. Uh, so it gives you some context, it gives you some examples, uh, and then you can start to prompt this a little bit differently as well. So I've asked the question already, what is marketing operations? Maybe I can ask it next. What does marketing operations look like within a B2B SaaS company? And again, we'll get a little bit more deeper and you can start to go back and forth and refine kind of the prompt or the question that you're asking to get additional details, which is what I find to be the most amusing part of all of this, because you can really get to the end details of really what you're looking for. But outside of asking questions to chat GPT, one of the things that I was really interested in learning about was how can I actually operationalize some of the tasks that I do outside of chat GPT, say in Google Sheets or in the marketing automation platform with a tool like chat GPT. So one of the things that I've always been really interested in is normalizing and standardizing data. Way, way, way back, man, I guess almost 50, 15 years ago now, uh, in 2008, when I was at Eloquent, I was on the marketing operations team there, I built something called the contact washing machine. And the idea of the contact washing machine was to normalize and standardize your data sets so that it makes it easier to score against, it makes it easier to segment against, it makes it easier to build lists against. And 
it's something that I've always had a passion about because I know that when your data is as good as it can be, the stuff that you can do is just that much better, that much more personalized and that much more targeted. So what I wanted to do with ChatGPT, and this was something I actually did recently with one of my customers, was trying to figure out, we've got a list of titles. How do we bucket these titles? Can we bucket them into things like senior, mid, or junior level management positions? Can we bucket them into job levels? Can we bucket them into job roles? And surprise, no, not necessarily surprisingly, ChatGPT was pretty good at doing this. So I want to show you an example of what I've used uh, ChatGPT for here in terms of data normalization. So one of the things I'm not using any real data, we'll talk a little bit about the, um, we'll talk a little bit about using PII or personal level data within ChatGPT. But for the purposes of just today, what I asked ChatGPT to do is come up with a list of different titles that you would potentially find in B2B tech. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna copy all these titles and then I'm going to say, can you please translate these titles into job levels and job roles and put it into a table that I can copy into Google Sheets? Before I hit enter, before I put this in, there's a few kind of things that I'm learning about prompts with chat GPT and, and kind of really with any AI tool that you're having a conversation with be specific. If you want to use the data in a certain way, chat GPT will make some recommendations on how to do it. And I'll show another example really quickly before I jump into uh, using chat GPT with Zapier and HubSpot about how you can use this to help even write things like Salesforce formulas for validation rules, for example. So you can get really specific. You can get really specific with the data set that you're using. But in the scenario here, I'm going to use the data set that chat GPT generated for me. And then I'm going to use it to generate a new table of job levels and job roles. So I'm going to paste those values in. And here we go. The magic starts to happen. Now, historically, and I'm kind of an old school guy, I would build these rules manually in my marketing automation platform. I would go through and say, this title contain this. It's title exactly this. Uh, it, and if that's the case, then set the job level to this or set the job role to this. I know that there are enrichment tools out there that do all of this work for you where they can kind of categorize the data for you, which is fantastic and keep using those tools. But if you're wanting to do things a little bit more old school or maybe do things a little bit more kind of tied specifically to the data that's in your database and you want to break it out a little bit differently than maybe how an enrichment provider would do it or how your marketing automation platform potentially goes through and does it as well, then you can get really specific for how you want ChatGPT to interpret the data that you've brought in. So be specific and you'll be surprised. Sometimes if you think you're being so hyper-specific that ChatGPT is not going to know what to do, you may surprise yourself. You may actually see some really cool things start to happen from that. So in this scenario here, I've got a, now a list of all my job titles, their associated job level, and then an associated job role. And I can basically built that all within the, the, the span of a few seconds here, which is really, really, really cool. Um, and again, you can use your own data on this. One thing I will recommend, and we'll talk about this more towards the end as well, but one thing I would highly, highly, highly recommend is don't use any customer data in here. Don't use any identifying data more than anything. I've gone through and I've stripped out any sort of data that I use when I'm potentially using customer data. I don't use company names. I don't use email addresses, first names, last names, anything like that. I try to keep the data set as minimal as possible, but enough that it allows me to get out the information here without potentially exposing any personal information uh, into the into this tool, because that's just, I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, and so, yeah, really cool to kind of go through, see how quickly ChatGPT can do some of this stuff. Now, one of the other things that I've kind of played around with ChatGPT on is building personas or getting ideas for how to, building, how to build personas. Personas can sometimes be 
uh, a bit of an exercise to go through and do, but the, it's really important to understand who your customer is. And so being able to get some, get some ideas, use the data that you have to go through and do that, uh, chat GPT can be really powerful with that. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to ask, let's say, please. I'm very polite. I'm Canadian. I asked the tool to, I ask please. And thank you. Whenever, whenever I talk to a computer here, please generate a list of personas for a B2B manufacturing tech company, for example. So here we go. ChatGPT is now going through, building out some ideas around personas. Are these all 100% accurate? They might not be. Context becomes really important here. But at the same time, use it as a tool to kind of generate some ideas for yourself. Maybe you want to generate some fun names. Maybe you want to see just how ChatGPT interprets what we perceive to be a B2B manufacturing tech company, for example. And again, you don't have to go through and use all of this and say like, oh, my personas are all built. I'm good to go. Y you do need context. And that's one of the things that I think becomes really important with using tools like AI is that you still have to know how to implement it. Outside of knowing how to prompt it, that's kind of one thing to learn how to do. You have to know how to take that information and then apply it the way that that is really important and the way that's really efficient as well. And so while this is all fine and good, uh, again, you want to make sure that you're spending a little bit of time analyzing what ChatGPT is producing, but also putting your own little thumbprint on it so that it's not just computer generated. It's It's got some feeling to it. It's got some brand identity to it. It's got uh, just kind of that humanness to it as well, but a really good tool to kind of help generate some of those ideas. Lastly, before I jump into walking through an example around ChatGPT and HubSpot and Zapier, uh, I want to show this one really quickly because I think it's actually pretty cool. So I'm going to start a new chat here and I'm going to say, build a Salesforce formula that validates the email address field on a lead has all the proper characters and symbols. Now I know that Salesforce pretty much does this out of the box, but I want to use this as an example that you can use this tool to help build things like validation rules within a tool like Salesforce or build of an Excel rule or, an, or Google Sheets function in here as well. I've done that with complex V lookups of if and thens and all of that sort of stuff. It can make your life that much easier when you can start to use the tool to help generate some of these things for you. But again, you have to have that context on how to implement it. So again, ChatGPT is pretty good at explaining exactly what it's built, why it's built things a certain way. It'll even go as far and say how you can create the actual validation rule for this as well, which is again, super cool. I, I use this when I kind of run into roadblocks with checking this uh, building actual validation rules or any sort of kind of Boolean logic um, within tools like Salesforce or Google Sheets or Excel or things like that. And it saves me so much time and it allows me to be that much more efficient that this kind of becomes, it feels like a person that I can tap on my shoulder virtually beside me and say, hey, do you know how to write this? Do you know how to change this? Do you know how to augment this? chat gpt is pretty great at doing some of this stuff so don't sleep on this tool from an operationalization standpoint it's really cool when it comes to content generation it's really cool when it comes to idea generation but i think for me personally and i hopefully like-minded folks who are in marketing ops or in rev ops or in sales ops or in any sort of operational style role Try using the tool to do some things like, like SQL code, like JSON code, like Python code, uh, like validation rules, like, uh, like SoCool here for Salesforce, or writing JavaScript validation, or building basic landing pages or emails with basic HTML that you can go and plug things in. Lots of really, really, really cool opportunities here. So give it a try. That's all. That's, that's, that's what I would recommend. Uh, give it a try, see what you can find out, and would love to hear your feedback 
uh, as to some, maybe some of the ways that you're using these tools as well as how I'm using these tools. So before we jump, or actually not before, we're going to jump in and walk through my last example when it comes to using a tool like ChatGPT directly within your marketing automation platform. And in this scenario, I'm using Zapier to kind of be that bridge between the two. So let me jump over to Zapier here. And what I'm doing here is very similar to what I did in my first example when I was talking about ChatGPT, uh, doing title normalization. So in this scenario here, I've got my Zapier looking at my own instance of HubSpot and it's looking at the job title field. Uh, as you can, well, it's looking at job title. It will look at it, but I'm also wanting to return back a normalized job title value based on what I prompt chat GPT to do as part of this little workflow. So the idea here is that I want to take uh, a job title and then normalize it into one of three buckets, which I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So I'm going to find my test record. So you can see you got Mike and Mike McFarland.ca here and my job title right now in HubSpot is co-president. So I'm gonna continue with that record. And then I'm gonna add a step in here to have a conversation with ChatGPT. So much like I was prompting ChatGPT on the website, I can do the exact same thing here in Zapier. So I've got my account set up. I've got my action defined here. And the user message that I put in here is basically the prompt that you would see me put in ChatGPT. Normalize this title into senior management, middle management, or individual con contributor. And then the important part, only return this, the normalized title. So I'm dynamically pushing in my value of co-president uh, from HubSpot. But the most important thing here is this last piece. You'll, you saw when I was prompting ChatGPT, it would give an explanation on a lot of things, which is great. I don't want the explanation. I just want what it thinks this title is from a normalized perspective. And so I add that field in, I'm going to continue. And so you can see here, this is what I would send over to chat GPT. Uh, we're going to send over a value of co-president and down here. At, and you can see here, the, the, the answer is already back. It's senior management. Um, now I want to take that value of senior management and write it back to my HubSpot contact that just had its title uh that just had its title normalized so i'm going to update that contact i'm going to identify my record based on the record id of the hubspot contact and then what i'm going to do down here a little bit of scrolling is take the response that i got back from chat gpt in my previous step and then from that prompt and write it to my normalized job field so you can see here we would, we would eventually write a value of senior management directly into this title or into this specific field. So again, this is something that would just automatically happen in the background. If someone new enters your HubSpot database, for example, and enters a title of president or marketing manager or marketing operations manager or director of marketing ops, you could automatically have Zapier and ChatGPT listen for that prompt, use Zapier to prompt ChatGPT into a conversation to look at that title and return back a normalized value for you automatically or automagically. Now, there's so many different ways that you can use this as well. Uh, one of the ways that I'm trying to play around with this is cleaning up things like country or state values. So making sure that country values, because we have da different data sources pulling in data all the time from CRMs to list uploads, to forms, to enrichment tools. Maybe you need everything to be set a certain way. Uh, one of the things I've been starting to work on, I haven't fished it just yet, is to do some data normalization around region information, uh, very similar to what I was doing here with title as well. So I show this because this is all, like I mentioned earlier, this is really important to know how, like what are some real life use cases for this? These are basic, I think. Maybe a little, maybe not basic, but basic in terms of what I think most marketing operations folks would do 
when they're looking at cleansing and standardizing and making sure they've got a workable data set. So using the tools at, at your disposal here, like ChatGPT, like Zapier, like HubSpot, there are many more, uh, can help bring a lot of additional efficiency to your role so you can focus on the more strategic initiatives. And then I say strategic in air quotes because I think uh, having data kind of work in the background, kind of like a factory is really important. And then you want to be able to pump that data out so you can be a little bit more strategic around how you're marketing to someone, how you're scoring someone, how you're developing content for a certain persona. So those are some real life examples of how you can use tools like ChatGPT uh, in a day-to-day -day operational style role. Now, we talked a little bit about this earlier with, with using personal identified information or personal identifiable information, PII, within tools like AI. Um, I personally do not use any personal, <laughs> I personally do not use any personal information when I'm doing or using these tools. I either anonymize it or use IDs or use things like that so that there's just, there's no relationship between the where I got the data set and what I'm ultimately using it for. So uh, that's just me. Uh, I'm sure that there are other tools where you can confidently put in customer data if you've got the right security practices and things like that as well. That becomes really important to start to take a look at. But when it comes to using AI in marketing, a few things to kind of think about. Obviously, data privacy and consent. You want to make sure you're transparent around how you collect data. That's pretty much everyone these days. You want to have a proper privacy policy on your page and talk about how you're collecting and using the data and why it becomes critical to using that data for driving a better customer experiences or better customer experience. You may see things like unforeseen consequences. You could have a whole bunch of people try to manipulate data, or you may even use the tool in a way that's kind of working with your own bias on things. So try to remove yourself from that and remain as vigilant as possible and consistently kind of go through and review what these tools are, are producing for you. Just because they auto magically do a lot of really cool things for us doesn't necessarily mean that it's always gonna be right or it's always gonna be doing it the way that we expect it to be done. Uh, there's also managing the expectations around personalization versus intrusion. We all, I think, are used to the fact that we're being tracked online. You go to Amazon, you buy a book, you'll get recommendations for other books that other people have bought that are similar to that. Or if you've got a long purchase history, then using that purchase history data to provide additional recommendations on things that you can buy. There is a bit of a balance between being highly personalized and someone feeling like, is this person listening to me or tracking my every move? That's with everything. Um, anything that we're doing as digital marketers these days, you wanna make sure that you have that fine balance or at least set some expectations around what that balance should look like. And then lastly, the lack of human oversight. Again, the idea, I, I, the, the term that I used to always hear is set it and forget it. And that, not, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. You don't want to be looking at your different automations or your different tools every single day to make sure it's constantly doing the same thing. You can set up error notifications for things like that. But when it comes to using a tool like, like using different AI tools, you want to make sure that it, it's interpreting the data the way that you expect it to be interpreted. And not from a bias standpoint, but just from an accuracy standpoint. So... The idea of set and forget it, it's nice, but don't forget about, it's just like with your car. You got to take it in for maintenance every once in a while. It's the same thing with these tools. You want to make sure you're taking it in for maintenance, make sure that everything under hoods under the hood's looking good, make some efficiency tweaks, make some adjustments, and then just know that, yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff that's happening magically uh, based on the work that we're doing here. Before we finish off here, I just want to talk about a few different things that I've seen in terms of how folks have been starting to implement AI into marketing ops. So first and foremost, take a look at everything that you've got in your MarTech stack uh, or from your, from your data infrastructure side of things as well. And look to see if there are areas where AI can help. Don't try to be that person that plugs AI into everything. It's going to, it's just not, I don't think we're there yet. Um, but start small, figure out some basic examples, kind of like what I walked through. Let's normalize title based on this criteria. 
that's a great way to kind of dip your toe into the idea of using a tool like ChatGPT or any different sort of AI tools to help normalize and standardize your data. Talk with other teams in, uh, in your company as well uh, to see if there are ways that we can potentially integrate data sources to make the predictions or make the analysis that these AI tools are doing that much stronger. So we're used to putting data in a data warehouse like Snowflake. Um, are there opportunities to use data from there in conjunction with our CRM, in conjunction with their map, in conjunction with their web analytics to do some really cool stuff? And again, start small. Don't kind of just jump into the pool before dipping your toe in, uh, but find some really cool example or some cool scenarios that, that you may be able to use for there. I've talked about using kind of small scale tests to start. So you want to go through and kind of prioritize that and make sure are these going to be things that are going to help things to drive revenue, to drive more qualified leads, to drive better uh, data analysis, to drive better data quality. Uh, go through and start to figure out what are the, the priorities specifically for your organization or your team in terms of how AI can help. I, this is the big one, I think, too, is investing in employee training to help them understand how AI can help. It's like AI is here. Like it's not going anywhere at this point. Um, and there are a lot of great resources online to learn how to use tools like ChatGPT and the plethora of others as well. Uh, but if there's an opportunity to kind of bring someone in house uh, or just surface those resources for your team, it's just going to make your team that much more confident and comfortable in using these different tools or even prompt some really cool ideas that maybe you never thought of as well. That's also a really cool output of all of this. And then lastly, you're going to want to continuously modern analyze the data that's coming out of these different AI tools. Like I mentioned earlier, setting and, and forgetting it. I think at this point, it's a little too early. Um, and especially with some of these tools, they're constantly learning, they're constantly changing. Uh, you want to make sure that the output's going to be consistent to the way that, that you expect it. So setting up uh, notifications, setting up dashboards, setting up reports to kind of go through and analyze the data that's coming back or some of the things that are happening just to make sure everything is working, I think is a, a really good uh, step that you want to take when you're looking to bring AI directly into your marketing operations team. That's it. Uh, I've got some contact information up here as well. You can reach out to us at 3mg.ca. Uh, my email is up here if you have any questions or want to talk shop when it comes to using tools like ChatGPT in your marketing operations uh, group or in your MarTech stack. You can follow us on LinkedIn. You can follow us on Instagram as well. Uh, but really appreciate everyone uh, spending some time with me this afternoon. This is a lot of fun for me to talk about. And I'm just I'm just scratching the surface as well. I'm learning all this stuff kind of on the go. Uh, so to have the opportunity to kind of share some of my early insights with all of you has been really cool. So thank you to the team at Breadcrumbs for giving me the opportunity for this. Uh, and yeah, thank you again. Thank you so much, Mike. Of course, I have a kid running into the room <laughs> exactly when you finish. Get you out of it. Sorry, give me a second, guys. No problem. No problem. <laughs> the joys from working from home. Um, it's uh, it's certainly one of those uh, one of those things that become unpredictable, but you love to see you love to see that kind of come out on the other side of the screen. All right, right. here I am. Sorry, the, the movie I, I placed the M on uh, was too short. No. <laughs> <laughs> so th this was really insightful, Mike. Uh, thank you so much. I, I have a bunch of questions, but first sure. let's answer the question from the crowd. Sure. And the first one is from Eric. Mike, do you believe AI will drive automation for the retail industry? For sorry, for or for, for the retail industry, uh, I think so. I think probably more than more than we probably know right now. I don't do a lot of focus specifically in retail, so I don't have any like kind of direct expert experience uh, for this. But if I think about some of the use cases where I've used AI, um, maybe we can. Maybe there will be tools so that you can 
try out like you could take a picture of yourself and superimpose clothes on top of you to see what it looks like if you're buying a shirt get an idea of what that looks like um i'm sure from a data perspective there's already a ton of things these companies are already doing uh, in terms of analysis and predictability uh but i i am sure that every industry in some way shape or form is going to get touched on by ai yes and i would add i think it's also a more generic and broader issue. Uh, all these models are like generic models right now. So this is probably the beginning of this new trend of AI. And as Mike was pointing out, they are great for a lot of tasks. They are not yet great for other tasks. For yep. example, right now, a chat GPT can play with number, but is not great with like analyzing trends and stuff like that. Yep. It's more a language model. Yes. I'm sure over time we'll start seeing very specialized AI, whatever it's like by niche, retail or other things, or by function, like AI just for trend analysis, forecasting, etc. AI just for content. Uh, there will be an explosion. Yeah. Right, Mike? For sure. Agreed. Yeah, I, I think like when I look at ChatGPT, you kind of hit the nail on the head. I'm not going in there and doing any any like forecasting with data. It's just it's not that's not the tool for it. There are other tools for that for sure. Um, so it's yeah, it's very much language driven, conversation driven. Um, but yeah, it could be a really powerful tool when you want to do some of that stuff. Even for I've seen. I don't remember from the top of my head the name. There is a plugin now that have ChatGPT write Python code that will analyze and execute it so that it analyzes the, the numbers and output, the uh, forecasting from Python. But of course, that's not AI. That's AI writing standard forecasting algorithm yep. in, uh, in Python. But we'll get there. Yep, for sure. Next question for you. What are some of the things to add to your prompt to get a better response from ChatGPT? Good question. Um, I'm still learning that. And I like I see a lot of, I'll use the term LinkedIn influencers promoting things like the top 20 prompts that you should use or top 15 prompts that you should use in marketing. And those are all great. But I think, it, and they're good starting points. But what I find is, start to have like pretend like you're having a conversation so you start kind of with that generic prompt like i use with set these titles into these three job roles for me for example it does what it does and i see the output but then i start asking it different questions like or not even questions just different asks like change individual contributor to junior manager and it will go through and reset and do everything for me again so i think it's it's that ability to kind of go through and get get specific with what you want and see how far chat GPT can take it. I don't, I haven't got to a point where it's come back and it says, I can't answer that. Or if it can't answer it properly, it gives context as to why it can't answer it. Um, but try to be specific things that, again, like I said in the presentation, things like, like you, things that you think chat GPT might not know, they might know. I've done some really weird things with HubSpot data where you could export all the properties out of HubSpot and it can show you a list of all the all the values in a field. I need to get that and put it into an Excel spreadsheet, for example. But it's got columns and squiggly brackets and uh, quotes and all of that. I can use ChatGPT to help clean that up and format it in a way instead of me trying to write an Excel formula to go and try and do it as well. Um, so again, it's... It's it's going deeper with your prompt. Ask ask the next question and see what it can what it can do for you. Yeah, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, guys, if you have other questions, please write them in the in the chat comment box. Uh, in the meanwhile, Mike, I have a question for you. Something sure. that I'm thinking a lot about. So we we talked about all the upside of AI. Uh, I'm curious on your take on what are the threats of AI? Because, I mean, it has a lot of upside. On the other side, it levels the play field and it commoditizes a lot of stuff that were hard. So 
I don't know, I, I'm a fan of content marketing. I've always grown companies with content marketing. Nowadays, that's a commodity. Anyone, if they want, could produce 100 pieces of content per day at a ridiculous cost. It would have yep. costed us tens of thousands of dollars up until six months ago. Now it's basically free. And right now the quality maybe is not the same as uh, a human rider. Mm -hmm. It's the early days. We'll get there very quickly. So if everyone can do it, no one really has an advantage in doing it. Uh, what are the threats? How do you distinguish yourself and your marketing in this AI world? That's a really good question. I I think back to, the, I'm going to age myself here a little bit too, but when I when I got started in, in this industry, a I, I, very specific example, I remember when Eloqua went from Eloqua 9 to Eloqua 10. So all of a sudden they have a nice user interface. It's drag and drop. Everything's so much easier. And I'm thinking as a consultant, like, oh my gosh, like my job's done. Like I, I spent a few, I spent like four years really getting used to how to use this tool. And now it's basically accessible for everyone. What's going to happen? Um, the reality is nothing really changed. I think, I think, yes, is it going to make certain jobs, not necessarily redundant, but is it going to make certain jobs l maybe change a little bit? Probably. So if I'm a content marketer and I know I've got these tools that can write hundreds of pieces of copy for me all the time, what for me is the differentiator? Is it the human element? Is it the is it bringing um, things like uh, empathy to what I'm writing, or bringing more perspective to what I'm writing? These tools are only as good as the as the data that they have. And I think one of the things uh, you and I have talked about at length too, when we talk about lead scoring, is that the machine could do a lot of great stuff, but if you know your business, you want to make sure that you have elements of what you know to be true as part of what you're doing from a scoring perspective. And so I think it's, it's there's going to be a bit of a mix. There's going to be folks potentially like me who are small companies that don't have a ton of budget for stuff that are going to maximize these tools in a way that I would never have thought I could use them. But I think just with any sort of technology as it comes and it kind of disrupts, you're going to get a kind of the next phase or the next evolution of what some of these rules may start to look like. My job may completely change in the, in the foreseeable future because of some of this stuff as well. But it's, I think it's up to us who, who are kind of in the, in the way of, uh, or kind of directly looking at AI in terms of what they can do for us and what they potentially can do that uh, would not replace us, but change the way that we do stuff. Um I think it's just being prepared to augment the way that you do things so that, yes, maybe you start using AI as a content creator or as a content developer, but you go through and you add some additional details, you add some additional context that those tools just can't. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. I think we don't have any other question. Tori just posted the link to Mike's profile in the comments. Thank you, Tori. On LinkedIn, follow him, a lot of great content. And Mike, thank you so much for doing this. It was super, super useful. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, everyone.